In this video, we're going to take a look at the inverse normal distribution function. If we have a given probability, say p, then we can use our calculator to find a value of a, such that the probability, and let's just write this down here, the probability of our random variable x being less than a is equal to that given probability of p. Okay? And this function is normally found on your calculator as the inverse normal distribution function. So to find this on my calculator here, what I'd click is distribution, which is just shortened to DIST, so dist. Then I click norm here for the normal distribution. And then finally, I click INV with a capital N. And this stands here for the inverse normal distribution. And when you get to this point here, it will now ask for a few different things. So for the inverse normal now, This is likely what it will ask for on your calculator. It might not be exactly what I get on mine here, but it will probably be pretty similar. So the first thing that it would ask for here on mine is the data. In this case here, what you want is simply a variable. We want a variable here rather than a list. Then it will ask for the tail. So for the tail here, this is dependent on the question that you're working with. So on mine, it will ask for one of three things here. It will ask for left, right, or center. So ignore center for now. We don't need that um, for any of our questions. If I have left and right here, like I said, this would now depend on the question. So in this case here, if we're looking for, say, x being less than, if it's less than here, this would be a tail of left here, because the arrow is pointing to the left. And if we have greater than like that, then this is to the right here. Our tail is right, because the inequality here is pointing to the right. Okay, so if you want an easy way to remember, just look at which way the inequality is pointing. So if it's pointing to the left, working with a left tail, if it's pointing to the right, working with a right tail. Then it would ask for the area. So the area here is the given probability of P. The given probability of P. The given probability of P. And then finally what we need here is sigma and mu. And again, these are just dependent on the question. Obviously, I can't give you a specific value for those. You just need to, um, you know, use those from the given values in your question. Okay. So that's everything that we need there now for our introduction here to the inverse normal distribution function. Let's just take a look now at a quick practice question here for the inverse normal distribution function. So we just take a look now at this practice question here. We're being given the random variable x, which follows a normal distribution with mean 12 and a variance here of 2 squared, which is 4. So here we're asked to find to two decimal places the value of a, such that, and then we've got three parts here, so A, B, and C. So let's just begin with A here. We're looking for the probability here of our random variable X being greater than A. And that's going to be equal to 0.7. So to answer these three parts here, we're just going to simply use the inverse normal distribution function on our calculator. So we need a few things here. So to begin with, we need the tail. Remember for the tail here, we just um, choose the tail based on the inequality because this is greater than and the inequality is pointing to the right then. My tail here would be a right tail. Got a right tail here. Now we need the area. But for the area here, this is our given probability here, which is this value here. That would be 0.7 for part A. And then we need sigma here, our standard deviation, we also need mu, the mean. So for sigma then, well that would just be the square root of 4. The square root of 4, which is simply 2. And then for mu here, that would just be given as 12. So now all we need to do here is just enter this here now into our calculator. And what you should find then for the value of a, if you round this correctly to two decimal places, is we get that a is equal to 10. 0.95 there. Okay, that's the solution to A. Taking a look now at B here. We're looking now for the probability here that X is less than A. 
and this is equal to 0 0.45. So again, we're using the inverse normal distribution function on our calculator. So again, we need the tail to begin with. So the tail here, well in this case now, our random variable x is less than a, so the inequality is pointing to the left, so we have a left tail. The area here, that's this value here of 0.45, our given probability, in other words, p. We then also need um, sigma here and mu, but obviously they won't change from part a. So sigma here would just be 2, and mu would be 12. Okay. And again, all we do here now is just enter this into our calculator. And what you should find then, the value of a here, again, to two decimal places, we get 11.75 there. Okay. That's the solution there to b. And then finally for C here, we just clear the screen, just so we've got enough room. And we're looking for the probability here, that X is between A and 13. And that's equal to 0.27. So this one's a little bit different here because we can't just put this into our calculator to begin with. So we need to do a little bit of manipulation here before we can use the inverse normal distribution function. So what I'm going to do here is just rewrite this probability. So this probability here, we can write this now as the probability of x being less than 13 minus the probability then of x being less than a. That will still be equal to 0.27. Now what we're looking for here is the probability that x is less than a. Basically, I want to turn that now into this part here almost. So obviously all that will differ is this value here, this given probability. So what I'm going to do now is just put this here as a subject. So I'm going to add that to both sides, subtract 0.27 off both sides. And in that case, then we get the probability here of x being less than a is equal to the probability of x being less than 13 minus 0.27. Okay. So from here now, well, the probability that x is less than 13, we can actually find that exact probability. So we're not using the inverse normal distribution function for that. We're just going to do what we did in the previous video for finding probabilities. So obviously you just use this value here for mu. Um, we take the square root here for our standard deviation. So your standard deviation would still be 2. Um, obviously you just need to choose the correct upper and lower value. So if you do that correctly here, let me just write this down. The probability that x is less than a the probability here that x is less than 13, what you're going to get here is 0 0.6915. And then we subtract 0.27. And then if I evaluate this here on my calculator, the probability that x is less than a is equal to 0 0.4215. Okay. And from here now, it's almost identical to this question here. Obviously, just the value of p here is different. And all I'm going to do is just use the inverse normal distribution function now. So we need the tail. We now need the tail here. So my tail now is pointing to the left here, so we have a left tail. Again, just similar to what we saw in part b here. For the area now, that's our given probability here, so 0 0.4215. Then we need um, sigma here, our standard deviation. Obviously, it won't change, that will still be 2. And for the mean, again, that won't change, that will still be 12. And all we do from here now is just enter this into our calculator. And what you should find then for the value of a here, again, just running this now to two decimal places, is we get 11.60 there. Okay? And there we have it, so that's the solution there. That brings the end of this video on the inverse normal distribution function. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at the standard normal distribution.